It's delicious. I just got it. We're going to talk about something a little weird and a little different, something that you probably didn't expect to see on a gaming channel. We're going to talk about giant redwood trees. And the reason I want to talk about that is, well, for one, giant redwoods are probably the most beautiful thing in nature. They may also be one of the oldest living things on the planet. They're huge and they're hidden in the woods. And there may be some bigger ones out there than, that, that no one even knows about yet. Maybe a few people, but not many people know about the biggest of the biggest trees. And they're being gatekept. Somebody knows, and they're not publishing the location. They're not publishing the specs. But someone out there knows about these huge trees, and I've been looking for them. Because I am fascinated by nature. I have a great respect and love for the nature. But it's important for these to be gatekept. Yes, I'm actually saying in this video that gatekeeping can be good. And I want to explore that in maybe a couple future videos where I just talk about when gatekeeping can be good. Most of the time, like 89 to 90% of the time, gatekeeping is a negative thing. It's toxic, especially when it comes to digital stuff that, you know, no one's no one's being hurt if someone else uses Linux, yet the Linux community will gatekeep certain things or tell people like, well, if you're not smart enough to use the terminal, then you this is not for you. Um, you know, that's a digital thing. You're not hurting anyone by helping someone who has no idea what they're talking about when it comes to Linux. But when it comes to giant trees, if the location got out for some of these giant trees and hordes of people went there, especially hordes of selfish Americans who are going to litter, throw things on the ground, trample the undergrowth, trample the ferns, that could be extremely detrimental to the area. And we saw that already with one particular grove of trees. But before I get there, I want to talk about the giant redwood trees and where you should go if you want to see the big ones. And then we'll talk about the secret ones. So in California, there are several different groves of redwoods all up and down the coast. And there's even a few that extend into the Oregon area right around here, around Brookings. But if you scroll up and down the map, a lot of people on the Internet are going to recommend going to Big Sur, going near San Francisco. There's Muir Wood here. And those are a very convenient place to see giant trees, giant, beautiful redwoods with the signature uh, interesting, almost ancient looking bark. Like if I if I were an int, I would want bark like a giant redwood. So you can find giant redwoods, uh, you know, in and near the San Francisco area. 30 minute drive from San Francisco over into Marin County and Muir Woods is somewhere, I guess, in this area. I'm not sure if I zoom in, I might be able to see it, but it's somewhere in it's past the Golden Gate. There it is, Muir Woods. This is beautiful. So I just click it. You'll see some of the photos coming up. Beautiful trees everywhere. Huge. But these are not as girthy as the sequoias that you find in the Sierra Nevada mountains. If, you, if you're just joining and you thought I only like games and technology, just know that nature and especially giant trees and mountains are all the way at the top of my list. I worked at a horticulture society for a while. I got into gardening. I grew up with a garden. I could have gone down a different path and I could have like gotten hooked on giant trees and just become a giant tree enthusiast and, and you know spent most of my time wandering around in the in the forests of California looking for the biggest trees. If you go over to Sequoia National Forest, you just click on this, you'll see some huge trees. Look at these giant sequoias. They have a bit of a different bark. Um, they're similar to the redwood trees. They call them cousins. Some people say that they're not as related as we think they are. But yeah, there's it's a beautiful area. It's more rugged. Uh, it's not as it's not as much of a rainforest. It's more of a uh, more of an arid, more dry dry climate, as you can see here, almost a high desert. But as you get higher and higher, it becomes a little more alpine. So when you get here, you, you can find some giant trees. The biggest published tree on Earth, as far as the girth at the base, is General Sherman. And that's here. It's a huge tree. I'm sure you've seen it. There's also, I think it's called the President, which National Geographic did a special on. And it's a beautiful, huge tree. If, you, if you're in this area, if you're in L.A., it's three hours away. It's worth the trip. But just know that the way that they measure these trees is usually at the base. The way they measure the redwood trees is usually at chest height or, you know, around that area. They measure it a little off the ground because the roots can kind of go in all directions and do a lot of crazy things. So there are some redwood trees that do rival the, I mean, there's known redwood trees that rival the biggest of the sequoias. And the sequoias generally top out at around 300 feet tall, but the redwoods currently are approaching the 400 foot mark when it comes to height. Um, there may be some unpublished ones that are very close to that, but I think right now we're around 360 or so. That's Hyperion. It's somewhere hiding in the forest with an undisclosed location that's 
that's kind of getting out a little bit right now, but it's not a it's not that impressive of a tree, in my opinion. If you go to see Hyperion, it's like kind of impressive, but not like extremely impressive. So I would recommend not trekking to see Hyperion. It's really tall, but from the ground, it's hard to tell. They're all so tall and majestic, and it's not that wide at the base. The diameter's around 14 feet, whereas some of the diameters of these trees uh, is over 20, 25 feet. It's about the same diameter as the trees that you see in Muir Wood, just north of, of, of San Francisco. Beautiful, huge trees, but the diameter is only around 14 feet. Bigger than any trees you're going to find in most other places of the world, but still, compared to the other giant redwoods and some of the sequoias, it's not near the, you know, the, the maximum size. All right, so where do you need to go to find the big trees? And it's really weird because if you look this up online, you're going to get so many conflicting reports. But I'm going to tell you right now, the biggest trees are in Redwood National and State Park. There's a bunch of, na there's a bunch of state parks inside Redwood National Park. Uh, and there's two different places that you want to look. First off, it's Crescent City. And Crescent City has the Jedediah Smith Redwood State Park, where some of the biggest redwoods on the planet, some of the biggest trees on the planet live. Maybe the second or third, maybe the first, who knows? Who knows what they're gonna find in this area? There could be bigger ones that are just not on trails hiding off of some of these, in some of these areas. But you know, you drive 20 minutes from, from Crescent City, which is a nice city, beautiful seafood. Um, it's small, you know, it's got a small town vibe. You drive over here to the Jedediah Smith Redwood Park, and there are multiple trails that will take you to some huge trees. I'll break those down in just a second. The second area that you want to go to to look for the really, really big trees would be down here at a place called Oric. And Oric has some trails around here. I'm not going to get into all the details. Um, and there's also a trail called the Tall Trees Trail. I'll give you that much of a hint. But yeah, this is the other area, Oric. And maybe, maybe the biggest tree is lurking somewhere around this area, somewhere in here, who knows? The biggest tree on earth could be here, bigger than the sequoia, like at, at the base, just a bigger tree all around, just more mass, more volume of wood, just a huge tree. So the one that I went to go see is up, it's more convenient, it's five hours from Portland, and I went to go see a tree called Grogan's Fault. A blog from uh, Mario MD Vaden. Look at that tree. So this is a picture that he took. He's a photographer and an arborist. So he knows more about this than I do. I've only worked for the Horticulture Society for a while and gardened a bit. But he's an arborist, and that's a different field entirely. Trees are a different uh, thing. And when I worked for the Horticulture Society, it was in a, a sort of a wet mangrovey type environment. So I got to know water plants a little better. So I usually go here and read it as much as I can to make sure that I'm not gonna damage anything and make sure I stand in the right spots and don't break any of the roots because these trees are ancient. This tree that you're looking at right here, it's called Grogan's Fault, not called the Juggernaut. People have, have mislabeled it the Juggernaut I've heard, so I don't believe it's called the Juggernaut. Um, it is one of the biggest trees on the earth and I had to. you have to go off the trail to get there. I'm not gonna tell you where, but you have to like go off trail quite a bit to get there. In fact, I've got a, well, I've got a pretty big bruise here from slipping and slamming into something it was a, a slippery log that went down there's a lot of trees that are down right now at this point in time and they've covered the trails so the the trees being down because of a huge storm has, has made it even more difficult to get to this big tree just sometimes the trail is it's there but it's hard to find and that's how a lot of these trees are maybe only a few people have been there and maybe there's not even a trail you'll just see like a very lightly trodden path or something when i i went to go see this tree it looked like no one had been there for the entire winter there's no evidence of any other human taking this trail for a very long time. Didn't see anybody else in the area, so it was just just the tree. It was beautiful. I'm putting myself in these photos. I don't usually like to be in so many photos so you can see the size of this. Now this one is 20, around 26 feet in diameter. 26 point something feet in diameter. Now they say there's another one that's, that's uh, 29.2 feet and another one that's 32 feet in diameter somewhere else so there are even bigger ones the one that's 32 feet in diameter is likely a bigger tree than general sherman they're the, you know therefore showing that redwoods are the true giant sequoia species on this planet they're the true giant trees on the on the planet with sequoias being a second place tree overall just a second biggest tree i'm not going to get into tree snobbery about all that but so when you're in nature and you see something like this that's as ancient 
as, I mean, it's just ancient as anything around. It's like the one of the oldest living things on the planet. Being this old and being this big, it's it's hard to fathom what you're looking at. They they estimate that this could be 4,000 plus years old, this tree, and it's been living here in the woods for 4,000 years. It's been through fires. It's been through rough changes in the area. It's It's been through a lot. Now they have a certain type of sap that they produce that makes them very uh, good at, at combating illnesses and viruses or whatever, bacteria. So they're resilient trees. They're, they're made to last. But it's hard. It's, it's, it was hard to fathom what I was looking at when I got there. It's, it's an enormous thing. And just you can feel how old it is if that's maybe it's just the shape of the bark. Maybe it's some sort of a mental thing. You know, it's like people describe religious experiences, um, the sort of like these. But they're usually just emotional responses to the stimuli that you're feeding into your, your senses. And I had that. It was like, wow, it was un believable. It's really tall as well. I mean, it's taller than General Sherman. It's a massive tree. And what else, uh, you know, the other thing that's really impressive about this is it is a single trunk tree, whereas a lot of the other trees that are this size will have a split trunk or they'll have two trunks or sometimes it'll be two trees that grew close together and then sort of melded together and, and they appear as one tree, even though they are physically two separate living entities. Now, let me give you some tips on different places to go see big trees that you can just access and go and check them out. And you can find some trees that are almost as big as this. So a few years ago, there was a grove uh, discovered. I guess it was like probably over 10 years now, but it wasn't really made that popular. It was a grove of ginormous trees very close to Grogan's Fault. Um, and it was called, they called it the Grove of Titans because it was several trees that were around 20 and 22 feet in diameter. There might even be one that's slightly bigger than that. And there's a few of the trees there rank in the top 10 when it comes to redwoods. And there's multiple of these huge trees all in a small area. And you can just go and wander around these enormous trees. Well, someone whom they're calling an influencer, I haven't looked them up, but they've, they've complained about an influencer who went there. And they didn't give the GPS coordinates because that's sort of a barrier to entry that a lot of people are like confused by. What they did was they actually gave step-by-step -step very clear linear instructions how, of how to get to the Grove of Titans. And then after that, the Park Service was overwhelmed by just a ton of people flooding in. Someone at the Park Service said it was like the LA freeway system going to these trees. Like that's how much, that's how many people were going there. They were trampling the undergrowth. They were damaging the roots of the trees. They were being disrespectful. They were climbing on them. They were, uh, you know, destroying a lot of the fauna and or not the fauna, the flora in that area. And they were also compacting the soil, you know, like a lot of boots in a lot of spot, you know, like near the trees can compact the soil. And the soil has a very thin layer on top. If you compact, I mean, if you compact just a very thin layer of soil, it makes it exponentially harder for the water to penetrate into the ground. And we don't need that. You'll have to like dig it up or till it or, you know, loosen it up so that the water can get in and, and get to the roots. These trees do need a lot of water. They absorb some because they're coastal redwoods. They absorb some from the fog, but they need the moisture. So if we have a bunch of people all going all around the tree and just compacting the dirt in all areas and not just one or two spots, that's really bad for the tree's health. So the Park Service came in and they built these grates, as you can see on the ground. Now, what's funny is the Park Service, I'm not sure if they have arborists on staff. I'm not sure, how, you know, what sort of people they have on staff, but they, they came in and installed these. And some people argued that installing these in the ground did more damage to the flora than in some of the root structures than a lot of the trampling did. But it's probably for the best because if the, if the tourism continued to pour into this area, it would have eventually over time done a lot of damage. Now the benefit of these is that now you can go and not worry. You can, you're up, you're walking on these metal grates that don't really fit the forest aesthetic, but they are good in the sense that they have uh, huge slats and they're, they have a lot of grip. So when you're walking, I would running all over these things, just goofing around. It's fine to run on them, but the water will, will go through and penetrate to the ground and you know, they're, they're there and it totally changes the feel of this area. Even though these trees were grand and ridiculous, and I highly recommend you go and check out the Grove of Titans, because even though there are these unsightly grates on the ground that don't fit in with the surrounding nature, 
The trees themselves are unbelievable and beautiful. And it's a very short hike, just a few minutes, and you're, you know, maybe 15 minutes, and then there you are in the Grove of Titans. You have to go up a hill a little bit, and there you are. And they're unbelievable, and it's, it's another instance where it's just hard to fathom how big everything is. If you don't have a lot of time, there's another trail nearby, and maybe you only have time to go on one trail. Well, you need to go just a few steps down the road, I guess, to a different trail called the Boy Scout Trail. And now the Boy Scout Trail has a few huge trees on it. A couple of them are just off the path, uh, one being the Boy Scout tree, which is a, I believe it's a split trunk tree. And then there are some other huge trees in that area, possibly bigger than anything we've talked about. Now the benefit of the Boy Scout Trail is that it is a much longer trail. It's an easy trail. It's not not very not a lot of uphill climbing or anything but you do have to walk quite a ways maybe over a mile or so to get to the biggest trees but the entire time you're there you're surrounded by monster huge redwoods so your walk and it's it's a much better nature walk with a, just huge trees in all directions it's it was the experience from go, from going to that area other than finding grogan's fault going on the boy scout uh, trail was the experience. So I highly recommend that you check out this trail. Go all the way to the end. It goes into some other groves. It's very close to the Grove of Titans. If you wanted to go off trail like an idiot, you could probably get to the others, other trees that are in that area. But there are a couple there. You know, I could probably bring it up like biggest trees in the Boy Scout, you know, biggest. A couple of the trees in that uh, trail that I would recommend, they're both a little bit off the trail, but there's one called Hailstorm that's well known. I think there's a marker for that, and then also the Boy Scout Trail. Then there's the Girl Scout. I mean, the Girl, the Boy Scout and Girl Scout. I think it is. I don't know. There's two trees like that. I forget. A lot of trees. I saw a lot of trees. Anyway, I'm very curious to know what you think of these enormous trees. Again, I know this is a strange topic for this channel, but also, how do you feel about the biggest trees being gate kept? Should we open this up to the public and let them build the giant tree hotel and casino? You know, when you go see General Sherman over in the Sierra Nevadas, it's a well-known tree. It's documented. There's fences all around it. It's very public. There's, like, pavement going right up to it. It changes the mood. It really, really changes the mood and makes it so that anyone can go see it. But they had to do that because if they just left it wide open and didn't put a fence around it, people would be climbing it, jumping on it, carving their initials into it because Americans are very selfish and sometimes very ignorant. And I think that's true for a lot of other places in the world as well. There, culturally, we just think we can go and everything's here for us to have, you know, use as a playground. And that's especially true when it comes to the people who think that the world is ending soon. They're like, oh, we can just destroy everything. This is great. Let me go, let me go write my initials on it with, with a chainsaw. Perfect. 4,000 year old tree. Amazing. I can just like go over there and throw garbage on it or whatever. I just, you have to, you have to gatekeep these things. It's really sad, but, you know, the people who are respectful and uh, understand, you know, how to do the legwork to find these trees, I think that there are a group of people you may be able to get in contact with and figure out where they are, but I'm you know, don't, don't message me. I'm not going to tell you where these trees are. I will be a tree snob. That's just all there is to it. But you know what? You can benefit from watching it here in these videos. It ain't the same. Holy shit, it's not the same. Those trees are amazing. Anyway, um, Mario Vaden, if you are Vaden, if you see this, hello. Thank you very much for your for your blogs. They were, oh, thanks for subscribing, whoever did that. But thanks very much for your blogs. They're very inspirational. And uh, I like a lot of the information you, you include on how to be respectful for the trees. Got to be as respectful as you can. I'm kind of bent on finding these things because I, I, I don't know, like some people want to climb Everest. I want to like just see these trees. That's it. I don't want to climb Everest. I want to see these giant redwoods like, because they're alive and they're just giant, ancient, living things. They've been on this earth for longer than anything. All right, it's the end of the video. I'm kind of rambling now just because I've got more footage to show you these trees. But yeah. Oh, last thing. If you are um, disabled or unable to hike, maybe you're in a wheelchair, you should probably check out the Stout Grove. It is, uh, you go down a little incline and you can do this on a chair or a wheelchair a scooter or whatever and then once you get there it's mostly flat and well maintained and you'll be able to go around and see some absolutely enormous redwoods uh, it, that that area is one of the most impressive spots especially if you go when there's a you know later in the day when the sun is slightly lower in the sky 
uh, mid afternoon to late afternoon, the sun will shine through the canopy and it creates these like God rays and it's like this, some people describe it as being like being in a giant cathedral with vaulted ceilings and the sun coming through the windows. It was kind of like that, but I feel like there might be a better nature metaphor, you know, this giant canopy of trees. It was beautiful. Another benefit when it comes to Crescent City is that if you just drive north 30 to 40 minutes, you're going to find the Oregon coast. There's also the California coast, but the Oregon coast is a little bit different and it's really freaking beautiful. Look for a place called Secret Beach. Trust me, you want to go and check out Secret Beach because there are some other other places that are maybe prettier. I don't I don't agree with some of the people who say that other places are prettier in this area, but this one is easier to get to and safer to get to. Some of the other places are not safe at all. So if you want a quick view of the Oregon beach with beautiful rocks and arches and waves and, you know, just stuff that you'd see in some kind of fantasy movie, you want to go up to Secret Beach. It's beautiful. Trust me. Do I want to make any uh, sales for everybody? Yes, I'll, do, I'll, I'll remind everyone that we're having a sale on this. Half price with this. Intelligent Mouse is the coupon code over at EpicPants.com. My favorite mouse. It's because I... It's called the standard issue, but it's because I uh, kind of modeled the shape a little bit after the IntelliMouse from Microsoft, one of my favorite mice from back in the day. So there you have it. All right, everybody. Bye.